we found a little bit of woodworm behind the uh, headlight on the chimney and I've started to repair it but then the more you look the more you find and the whole of this front member has rotted away very difficult repair on the car so my plan is to cut this piece off and uh, weld it back together on the bench and then uh, weld it back onto the car so my plan is to cut the uh, box section there cut through anywhere here and where it joins onto the body just there but it turned out that uh, uppercut wasn't the best place so uh, I cut it across there instead and uh, as we can now see there isn't a huge amount left of it making references uh, to my fixed points uh, this is going to be the first piece that we're going to weld on we're just tacking the thing together now and then we have to uh, fill in between the tacks with weld and uh, it's a time consuming job but we we did that uh, rod in and out of the pool of uh, molten metal uh, to ensure good penetration and a good solid weld. The next piece I've put on is this piece here which I've tacked to the body. So I then weld those two pieces together and tack it on to the uh, movable portion cut through these tacks and weld the whole thing up on the bench it's a slow process but uh, you, you get a really good weld this way there's a, a huge amount of uh, waste heat with gas welding excess heat say all the parts distort and buckle uh, but the gas welder uses that to his advantage not something that you can teach but it is something that you can learn and uh, I spent hours and hours doing this when I was younger uh, before everybody bought a mug welder from Halfords. Get a good neutral flame there and a bit more seaming. And you use the filler rod not only to uh, fill the pool of weld, but to control the temperature of that pool. The thing about well. gas is you don't even have to clean the metal. It uh, burns the paint off and the rust as you go along. Don't breathe those fumes in there, they're horrible. We tack it all together. It doesn't matter if the tacks stand off because we can uh, adjust that with the hammer in a minute. Now I have just hammered these tacks up tight, so uh, now I run the seam around. Again, I, I don't know how much gas we use on a job like this. Not as much as you would think, actually. Uh, the number on the nozzle, uh, number three, uses three cubic feet of gas per hour. Now you can't do that with a MIG welder. It's just like making a rocking horse really. Uh, you keep welding another piece of metal on until it looks like a rocking horse. Uh, you don't actually have to worry about the shape of the metal you're welding on just another piece and another piece until you get there and uh, any bits you don't want you can cut off getting a bit closer now I'm actually on a, a bench of sorts now
when I was younger, we didn't even buy uh, welding rods. We used to use coat hangers from the dry cleaners. Anything to save a few bob. For this kind of welding, I always uh, like the 332nd welding rods, the middle size, which just ha happens to be coat hanger size. Do I have managed with just two. So that's what we're chucking it down. Raining cats and dogs out there. Now I forgot to finish the video uh, when I welded the thing together. Uh, I'd uh, started putting the paint on and uh, there we are. Again, you can't do this with a MIG welder. There, it's not the prettiest job, but it is solid. And uh, we filled it with wax oil and paint inside, so it should last uh, the life of the car. A lot of work for what it was, but uh, we've done our best for the old uh, vehicle.